guys and welcome back to the vlog. Oh, it's been a while but I'm so pleased to eventually get my heavy workload done and back out into the great outdoors. I can't tell you how happy I am today to be out here doing this vlog. So yeah, it's been about five or six weeks since my last vlog when I announced I was going to be taking a break. So yeah, it's just really great to get back out. Today we are ascending Wind Hill in the Peak District. It's not a particularly high Hill. It's around about 350 meters, I think. But the uh, the walk up is quite arduous. It's uh, quite a slog, the first half a mile or so. Um, I plan to do a bit of a circuit. Uh, it's about a three-mile radius back to a waterfall down here near Bamford, near the uh, Lady Bower Dam. So yeah, really looking forward to today. Hopefully, there's going to be some cracking landscape photography opportunities along the way. Uh, the weather is super changeable today, even though it looks quite calm here in this woodland it's going to be extremely windy up on top of the hill so yeah anything could happen today so fingers crossed for some uh, yeah cracking landscape photography let's get up this hill and i'll catch you in a minute wow what a cracking walk that is amazing it really is great to be back out so a couple of things I'd like to talk about today. One is a big thank you to everybody that responded to my last video where I saw I was taking a break. I had so many comments wishing me well over the summer that it was just fantastic and it really spurred me on to get back out and create some more videos. So thank you so much for that. And secondly, I'm using a lens today that I've never used on the channel and uh, yeah, something a little bit different, but I've been using it a lot through the summer. So I thought I'd uh, have a bit of fun today, uh, see if you can guess uh, which lens that is. What I've done is listed all of my current Fuji lenses down in the description so you can kind of eliminate those from the list. Yeah, see if you can guess which lens it is. All of the B-roll, not any of the shots where I'm talking to camera, just the B-roll sequences are all shot on that particular lens there. So uh, drop a comment down below if you think you know which lens that is. And later, hopefully, we'll be taking the first ever landscape photo with that lens as well. So yeah right okay i think it's time to crack on get to the top and see what we can find guys hello you're right caught me doing a video <laughs> ah, just do youtube After reaching the summit of Wind Hill, the wind was just incredible. The tribe was vibrating so much, it was impossible to take a photograph. So, as you can see, it's a little bit windy now and a little bit colder too, I've got the jacket on. Um, I was a little bit dejected actually once I got to the top of Wind Hill. Um, the conditions were awful up there, really, really poor. The wind was just horrendous, um, but the light as well was hazy and uh, very, very bright. So, pretty much in every direction that I could shoot in, uh, the conditions weren't right. So. I felt a little bit disappointed. I really wanted to make a photograph at the top there, but to be honest, you know, you get what you're given and you just have to kind of move on if things are not working. And that's what I've done. And I've come down a little bit further from Wind Hill and I'm looking back towards Bamford Edge and I've found a nice-ish composition, I think. Um, but what I'm doing is just waiting for this perfect lighting. I think it's the light that's going to make or break the shot, to be honest. And what, what I'm trying to do is capture Bamford Edge with a light on it my foreground interest which is this stone wall which you might just be able to see behind me with a bit of light on it but the midground i'm kind of wanting to be in the shadow in the shade so i'm just waiting there's a lot of cloud around so i'm just waiting for a pool of light really to hit the stone wall and bumford edge but not the midground and i think the reason for that is um i kind of want this line of pine trees that you can see on the horizon to be kind of silhouetted just to break up the foreground and the, and the background and i think it the idea works quite well in principle, but uh, obviously it's just waiting for that light. And uh, you know, it's what we're always doing as landscape photographers, isn't it? Waiting for the light. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll come. I've been waiting about 20 minutes now and I've got a few shots in the bag already, but not one I'm particularly happy with. So 
think what we're going to do is just wait it out because I'm sure that um, at some point the light's going to fall on the landscape in the right direction. I'm going to be able to capture a shot. So uh, let me just talk you through what I've got set up on the camera. It's all pretty straightforward, really. Now, um, I've got the tripod situated on this heather and it is moving around quite a bit. So to compensate for that, I'm making sure my shutter speed's high enough and I'm at five hundredths of a second at the minute, so that's just going to eradicate any movement or any shake uh, that might happen on the tripod, you know. Um, and I'm at f8 as well, so that's getting everything sharp because I'm quite a distance away from my foreground subject, so that's making sure everything's sharp. I don't need to focus stack or anything like that for this particular shot, so everything should be uh, fine. Oh, it's still so windy here, but uh, yeah. Hopefully, it's uh, all going to work out well. I'm just keeping my eye on the uh, light that's coming through the clouds right now. And uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to take this shot in a second. And uh, then I'm going to make my way down through the plantation here, back down to Lady Bower, uh, walk along the edge of Lady Bower, and back to uh, the waterfall by Yorkshire Bridge. And we're going to be using the mystery lens. Here we go, here's the light. Let me take this shot quickly. Yes, I think we've got it. I think we've got it. After an hour or so of waiting, I do actually think we have got the shot. Awesome. I hope it's worth the wait. <laughs> okay, guys, yes. Anyway, as I was saying, back to the waterfall, and we're going to try out this mystery lens. And uh, yeah, hopefully, we can make a photograph of that too. So, photo on the screen. Hope you enjoy it. So this part is new to the vlog, it's a retrospective view of the photograph. I think it'd be quite good uh, going forward, but I'd love to know whether you think it's a good addition or not, so let me know in the comments. So yeah, this, this shot looking back towards Bumford Edge, I quite like it. I like the overall image, I think the composition is really strong. I just think it lacks a bit really, I think it lacks good light and drama and uh, I think it would be an excellent shot um, maybe at sunrise because um, having got back I looked at photographers at Ephemeris and noted that this time of the year the, the sun would just be rising to the sort of just above Bamford edge there so the top left hand third so I think that could really make a big difference to this image so if the sun's just poking above the, the rocks there on, on the horizon line I think it could make a significant improvement to this shot so I think it might be something that's worth revisiting. So here we are, mystery lens time. We're down at this waterfall here, which is right next to Yorkshire Bridge, just near Bamford. So we've finished our circular walk, which has been absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend it. What I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be putting a uh, blog post together, um, like I've done before. Uh, some of my trips to Wales, I've you know, documented the whole route. Uh, we've added maps to the post as well. So if you guys wanna do the same route, all that information is there for you. So what I'll be doing is doing that for this route as well. So I'm gonna be leaving the link in the description for that. It kind of leads me on to uh, something else as well, which I'm gonna be talking about shortly after I take this photograph. So basically what I'm gonna do here is uh, set this shot up looking back towards the waterfall. And in the bottom left-hand corner, or the left-hand third, if you like, the lower third, there's a fern, you might just be able to see it there, sticking up out the rocks. Now I'm going to use that as my foreground interest for this shot, even though it's uh, a little way away from me. So that might give you an idea on the focal length of the lens. So yeah, I'm using that as our foreground interest. And then the cascades in the background there, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use a long exposure to kind of uh, you know, make that shutter speed a lot longer, reduce the exposure time, and make that kind of milky effect that we see quite a lot in landscape photography. I think it works well for this because there's a few rocks here and it's kind of like meandering through the rocks. And I think it'll make the fern a little bit more prominent as well. So a little bit sort of abstract and I think it'll work well for this shot. So yeah, we're really looking forward to it. I'm gonna get everything set up and then I'll come back to you and tell you what the settings are on the camera. So we're all set up camera is set up on the tripod. I've got a circular polarizer on the front of the mystery lens. 
and also I've got the 10 stop filter on there as well and it's a pretty simple composition I'm at f8 and I'm just focusing on that fern uh, manually focusing on the fern and uh, yeah it's looking quite nice actually at the minute I've got a two minute exposure uh, it's clouded over quite a lot literally about 15 seconds ago I was at a minute so just this cloud coming over has reduced our exposure time by a minute uh, which is all good it's looking really nice the problem I do have though is the foliage in the leaves and in that fern are moving around so it's leaving me with a bit of a predicament really and what I'm thinking is that I might have to do two different exposures long exposure for the water and then take the tent stop off the front adjust the shutter speed and take a shot for the trees and the fern and then just blend those images together later in Photoshop I don't think there's another way of doing it really otherwise it's all going to look kind of wishy-washy and mushy and we don't really want that do we so yeah um, just waiting for this to uh, it's just finished now so I'm just gonna have a quick look just to see how we're getting on oh that was amazing literally just for those two minutes the wind completely stopped now it's picked up again this is incredible so I'm hoping we can do it in one shot but that being said I am going to take another exposure with a faster shift speed just to be on the safe side because uh, my shot earlier I'm not 100% sure whether it was uh, that good or not and uh, it'd be nice to get one decent shot one Instagrammable shot from this uh, little trip here in the Peak District so yeah I'm gonna take another shot now I'm gonna take the 10 stop off and just uh, grab a shot of that foliage and then we'll talk a bit more about the lens and then I'll put the photograph up at the end okay guys let's get this sorted out so here we go the mystery lens is revealed if anybody got it it'd probably be a bit of a miracle because it's not actually a Fuji lens it is a Nikon lens it's a to be precise it's a Nikkor 50mm 1.4 and I've adapted this to the uh, Fuji X-T2 and the X-T3 I've got a uh, KNF concept adapter which converts it from the Nikon FX mount down to the Fuji X mount and uh, this is a yeah, vintage bit of glass it's you know from the sort of late 70s early 80s and it's a yeah, beautiful beautiful lens and basically I've been using it for video I've been doing a lot of video this year and I've been really struggling with the Fuji lenses uh, mainly because I like to manually focus with uh, my videography work when I'm filming people it's really nice to have that adjustment with the manual focus and it's very very difficult to do it with the Fuji glass I've found well for me anyway you know others might find it different but uh, because the Fuji glass is focused by wire what I've found is it's very difficult to um, build up like a muscle memory when you're focusing it's very very difficult because uh, it changes focus very quickly if you rotate it very quickly and also if you uh, you know rotate it slowly it takes ages to rack focus whereas with an old manual lens you just know where you are there's a hard stop at infinity and there's a hard stop at the near focus end as well so you know exactly where you are this has obviously got an aperture of f1.4 so it's got super super shallow depth of field because this is obviously a 50mm lens uh, on an APS-C body so it's focal lengths around about 75mm something like that on the on the Fuji so yeah we've got a 75mm 1.4 effectively uh, but what I would say is at 1.4 it's properly crap to be honest it's very very soft it's very desaturated there's hardly any contrast whether that's to do with the uh, converter that I've got on there or not, I don't know. But that being said, F2, it's absolutely beautiful. It really is. Whether it's good for landscape photography or not, I do not know. So today's little photograph is, uh, you know, a great little tester for me to see whether, you know, it's, uh, it's a worthy addition to the kit bag when I'm out shooting landscapes. So, yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic as well on the Fuji. I really like the way it looks. And, yeah, it's been an absolute dream. I've really, really enjoyed using it. I've also, I've enjoyed using it so much. I've also bought another vintage lens and that's the Helios 44-2, which is a beautiful Russian lens. Uh, that's the one with the swirly bokeh. Uh, it looks awesome. I only paid 35 pounds for that. I paid about 150 for, that, for this. So yeah, really looking forward to seeing what this image comes out like. I'll put it on the screen in a second. Just want to touch on one more thing before I leave you guys. But back on what I was talking about before uh, about the website and about writing up these, you know, these 
hikes, if you like, these little uh, trips that I do, and making it accessible for everybody so you know the route, you know where to go, and you can find these locations for yourself as well. And there's a whole host of other information that I plan to put on there as well, uh, tips, different techniques, all of these little things. So um, I've been speaking to a few people about a way that I can monetize the website in terms of being able to make it you know, a viable option for me to do this because obviously you know, it takes a lot of time to uh, write all these things up and it's the kind of knowledge I want to share with everybody, I want to make it you know, useful for everybody. So um, what we're doing basically is we're producing a clothing line. Now, it's not something that I would uh, ever imagine that I would be doing, but yes, my wife and I have been working on this behind the scenes now for several months, and my wife's actually a fantastic artist, and we've been putting together a few designs that kind of fit in with the channel, um, and hopefully will be you know, really useful for everybody. I mean, everybody needs clothes, right? And they're gonna be affordable, and hopefully you know, the design's gonna be really good. They're gonna be partly hand-drawn, partly done in Photoshop, and they're going to be really cool, I hope. So, uh, yeah, we're probably about four or five weeks to getting the prototypes done. So hopefully they're going to be ready in time for Christmas. Hopefully, yeah, it should be really good going forward. So I'm really looking forward to getting those done and uh, putting those across to you and see what you think. And, you know, I welcome your honest feedback as well if you think it's a good idea. I really want to keep the website, you know, ad free. I don't want to be filling it up with spammy I mean, adverts. Uh, it's bad enough on YouTube. So, you know, it would be great, you know, if, uh, if I can run it other ways. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it. I'll take a look at the blog post, which is linked below if you want to find out a bit more information on the route. And I will see you next week because we're back on the weekly vlogs again. Yes, come on. See you guys. Hope you enjoy this video. So I absolutely love this image. I'm really drawn to flowing, cascading water, especially through woodland. I think it looks fantastic, I really do. Now, when I did do a fair bit of editing to this photograph, um, I did decide to blend two images together. Um, I could have got away with doing one, but uh, I just thought, you know, while I was here and I've got the two images, I would blend them together. And then when I started blending them together, I decided to paint in a little bit more of the a quicker exposure time to the water so I painted in some more detail to the cascade so yeah um, basically the top half of the image is the uh, shot which is exposed at around about a 30th of a second I think and then yeah literally I just reduced the opacity of my brush in Photoshop to about 8% and then just painted in some detail to the cascades and it really adds more to this image I feel and it looks really nice also, I accentuated some of the autumnal tones in the trees as well, just with a local adjustment brush in Lightroom. All in all, I really like this shot. I think it's uh, quite a strong composition. I decided to include the sky in this photo. Initially, I was going to crop it out, but I felt that um, that little bit of patch of grey, cloudy sky at the top right-hand corner just allowed the eye to wander through the scene a little bit more. So starting in the left bottom corner, you pick up that mossy rock and then onto the fern and then on through the trees up into the uh, the sky area and I just feel it allows that eye to wander through the woodland so I decided to include that. Overall I'm really pleased with this shot and I'm definitely going to be revisiting it hopefully in a few weeks time when the colours are a more vibrant yellow and golden colour.